In this video, we're talking about color gamut range, color accuracy, color profiles, basically what you need to know on how to pick a color accurate laptop or monitor for your needs. Let's get rocking. This video is for creative professionals looking for the right laptop or color accurate monitor. So what we're gonna look at in this video is an explanation of each color space, RGB, CMYK, an explanation of each color gamut range, Adobe RGB, sRGB, DCI-P3, NTSC, Rec. 709, and Rec. 2020. If you don't like to say Rec, well, that's cool. You say it differently. What is Delta E rating? When do you use CMYK versus RGB? And then of course, I'm gonna have some laptop and monitor recommendations at the end of this video. And if you wanna check those out now, you can head down in the description below and click those links. But remember, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. First and foremost, color gamut range. A color gamut defines a more specific range of colors from the range of colors identifiable by the human eye. For example, the visible spectrum. Since the range of colors they can reproduce varies, that is the screens or the monitors, the color gamut is established to make these differences clear and to reconcile the colors that can be used in common between devices. Let's talk about color accuracy and more importantly, the different ranges. Adobe RGB versus sRGB versus DCI-P3. sRGB covers the smallest spectrum. As you can see, it's the white line down here at the bottom. It jets up to lower end of DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB covers the largest spectrum for the average monitor and you know laptop display, and it tends to lean more towards the greens and the blues. So you can see here, this is the orange line leaning out towards the greens, uh, yes, towards the greens and the blues. DCI-P3 is also popular, but still covers a smaller range than Adobe RGB while leaning towards the yellows and the reds. So you can see here the green line leaning out towards more of the yellows and the reds. Here is a example from Acer's website. This is their website in the Acer Concept D section. Got some image credit down here. If you wanna go look up this whole page, it's a fantastic walkthrough on color gamut range and color accuracy. They've done a really great job, but I wanted to include this picture because I thought it did a really great job of showing us how the different screens produce the colors. Okay, so we see here, we're gonna have the sRGB. These colors are gonna be a lot more soft and muted because it doesn't have a large of a range. Then you have the Adobe color gamut, which is gonna lean towards more of the reds, or there's the blues and greens. And then you have the more yellows and reds, and this is the color gamut range of DCI-P3. Really great representation. I love how they did this. All right, next up, let's talk about NTSC versus Rec. 709 versus Rec. 2020. NTSC is a range you will see on some displays. So on some um, laptop displays, they'll say this is NTSC 72, for instance, okay? So this stands for the National Television Standards Committee. The colors depicted under the NTSC standard are very close to Adobe RGB, uh, as you can see here. Um, here's the NTSC behind the orange here. Um, it goes a little bit wider towards the blues and a little bit narrower on the um, reds and yellows. So although the red and the blue values are gonna differ slightly. Now note that if you see 72 NTSC, that is nearly saying 72% Adobe RGB or 100% sRGB. Now I say nearly because it's not exact, it's a slightly different classification, but if you see that you can kind of get a general gauge on how accurate your screen will be. Now for Rec. 709, it is the current standard for HD TVs. So you'll see this on a lot of TVs or monitors that are made for video editors. And then you also have Rec. 2020, which is be the becoming standard of ultra HD TVs. So like 4K, 6K, 8K, it is a range of colors that certifiers are claiming uh, is gonna be even sharper and richer and more brilliant to produce more brilliant images to come. So if you're a video editor um, and you wanna maybe like test your, um, your video projects on an actual TV, um, you could get a Rec. 709 or Rec. 2020 TV that has a high range in there and you will have really good color accuracy. As you see, it covers a very large spectrum. It's one of the, it is the largest spectrum on the color gamut chart. Um, so that is a great option for you. Next up, what is Delta E? If color gamut is the amount of color your screen can produce, then what is Delta E? So Delta E is a certification that clarifies the level of accuracy at which your screen produces that range, okay? So you'll see on a lot of laptops, Delta E less than two, um, for example. Now, the lower the Delta E, the better, 
Okay, so delta E is used to ensure that the color being displayed closely matches what the human eye receives. Okay, or yeah, basically that's that's really what it boils down to. All right, so here we go. Here's kind of the the chart as it were. So you'll barely be able to see a difference. Extremely small differences, only obvious to a trained eye. Medium differences, obvious to an untrained eye. An obvious difference and a very obvious difference. So a lot of gaming laptops um, sit around this range of Delta E. A lot of creative workstations sit around this range. And so that's kind of how you can kind of know what to expect. So you could have a laptop that has 100%, 99% uh, sRGB and 72% or 79% um, Adobe RGB, say for instance, the HP Omen, but then you can have the Delta E be about, I think the HP Omen's Delta E is like 4.42. So it's going to have good range, but the reproduction value is going to be more of a slightly more obvious difference. So I include those on a lot of my tests, the Delta E rating. So keep an eye out the, for those in the future. All right, moving forward, if you are getting some value out of this video and you want to be in on my weekly texting community, 850-306-4644, I send out weekly deals. So like laptop um, recommendations that are like on sale, those can be text straight to your phone. All you have to do is text into this number, hashtag, uh, then, then type in that word hashtag deals, and then I'll give you a few options on how to get into the specific deals that you want to see coming your way. So again, 850-306-4644. You can also text me your questions, engage with me there. I hope to see you over in the community. All right, next up is RGB versus CMYK. So RGB is red, green, blue. The combination creates white. If you put all the colors together, you end up with white. Whereas cyan, magenta, yellow, black, the combination ends up creating black. So you mix all the colors together and you end up with black. So these are the two different types of color profiles, digital and web versus print. Now, RGB versus CMYK. For RGB, this is going to be more digital work, such as video, social media, web design, 3D animations, and more. CMYK is going to be print work, so magazines, flyers, postcards, books, packaging, newsletters, the works. Okay, so what you really have to remember is what you're seeing on your screen. So if you're in an RGB color space on your screen, and then as a graphic designer, or well, yeah, I guess graphic designer would be the one sending to print. So as a graphic designer, you're sending something to print, okay? What your screen sees and what's going to come out of that printer is going to be different, okay? Because it's a different color space. The colors are being mixed in a different way. Now, the way that you verify that this is not going to be different is you get a Pantone swatch book, right? So you get a Pantone swatch book. You pick the Pantone swatch that you want. You put it into the computer. You tell the printer, I want Pantone 584 for that green or whatever. And then when it goes to print, that's the color that's going to come out. So that's how you overcome the difference between RGB and CMYK if you're going to be doing print design. Pretty basic explanation, but covers what we needed to. <clears throat> now, which should you care about? My go-to is Adobe RGB when recommending laptops for creative professionals. The reason being is it's the most standardized at this moment. DCI-P3 is starting to make a pretty big uprising, but overall, our Adobe RGB is going to be the most... Um, standardized across the board. The most reviewers are going to talk about it. It's going to be the most available information. It's going to be Adobe RGB. That, and what I mean by the most available is that's the one you want to be looking for. sRGB is good, but it's definitely like we've seen a smaller range. So the color is going to be more muted, more washed out. Um, it's going to be less range. So the colors are going to be less vibrant and brilliant. Um, so it in turn will be less color accurate. So look for that Adobe RGB. If you can get as high as you can, 100% obviously is the best. Okay, now here are some of my laptop recommendations. The MSI Modern 15, starting on the lower end of the price point. Now you're like, okay, that's expensive. What do you mean the lower end? Well, any lower than this, and you're going to get into those, you know, 60 and 40 and 50 percent Adobe RGB, and that's just not very color accurate. So these are one of the. This is one of the lower end in quotes, laptops um, to get you started. From there, we move up to the Asus ZenBook Duo, and uh, that laptop has 90... 9% sRGB, 80% Adobe RGB, Acer Spin 5, great laptop. I have reviewed it in my studio, done a full review on that. 100% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB. Then we have the HP Omen with a 99% Adobe RGB, and, or, or sRGB, sorry, this is a misprint, a 99% sRGB and a 72% Adobe RGB. Then we have the MacBook Pro M1 with 100% sRGB, 81% DCI-P3. Moving over to the Acer Concept D3 Easel, 99% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB, and then here we have 100% DCI-P3 and Adobe across the board. As you see, these more expensive laptops will have better quality screens. 
Now, if you want color accurate monitors, I don't have any pictures here on the slides, but I do have a few listed in the description below and you can check those out. Those are gonna be some sRGB and Adobe RGB color accurate monitors, ranging from like a more budget standpoint to maybe a slightly more expensive. I tried to find more budget ones in general because you're already buying a computer, I'm sure, so getting an expensive monitor is not always what you want to be doing. Again, if you do make a purchase through any of those links in the description below, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Do note that I'm gonna be doing uh, more specific videos on each layer of the color gamut range. So like focus on just sRGB or just Adobe RGB. So keep an eye out for those videos over here. I'm Benji Kaiser. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating, and I'll see you here on the next one.